Alright folks, welcome to week 11 of the class. We're really getting down there now. Alright, so, uh, let's talk this week. We're going to be talking about citations and works cited. Now, a uh, few uh, elements of business here first off. Uh, just as a reminder, your blog was due last week. Uh, so, if you have not turned that in yet, you are currently in the grace period for uh, turning in the blog project. So. Uh, we should be finished with that, and now we're working on the analysis synthesis essay. So what we're going to be talking about today is going to help you with creating your work cited for that particular essay. Okay? Uh, and it's going to mainly help you with complying with MLA formatting so that everything is cited properly, and all of your work cited pages are following a consistent format that is uh, easy to follow and uniform. Right, so let's go ahead and get started. <clears throat> so, for the analysis synthesis essay, you will be required to use a minimum of six research sources. As such, you need to be knowledgeable of how to cite the information you receive from those sources in your text, okay? Uh, there are a few ways to accomplish this, all of which fall under proper MLA formatting rules. So let's take a look at those rules and see what they have to say. Starting with basic in-text citation. The basic form of MLA citation involves a parenthetical citation at the end of a sentence, which includes the information you are citing. Okay, at the most basic, that's what you need for a citation. Okay? Uh, within the parentheses is the author's name or a shortened title of the source. This may also include page numbers if the source is a print source, otherwise leave it at the name and name or title. Okay. Now, I've been seeing a lot of people doing work cited uh, or doing citations in really bizarre ways. Uh, at least a couple of people have been doing what they think is MLA format, but what they're actually giving me is APA format. Uh, I've seen a number of people who do not cite anything at all. I've also seen a number of people who use citations that are way too long or do not refer to anything in their work cited page. Okay, uh, keep in mind these citations need to match up with what's in your work cited, so it has to be co corresponding with a listing there. Primarily, you want it to correspond with the start of the listing. So whether that is the la the last name of a human author or the uh, title of the work, uh, that's good determine whether you're using a the citation right. Okay? Now, uh, as far as writing citations out, citation appears within the end punctuation of the sentence. Okay? So as we have the, the listed here, you have the cited information, uh, and then the citation is inside the period. Okay? Uh, so in this case, it's an author and page number for a print source. Okay? Uh, that is for citations of uh, basic of information that you've integrated into your words and into your text uh, where you are not using uh, a quote, okay? If it's something that you, information that you are citing uh, just in general because you found that information, you used it, this is how you do it. If you're citing a quote, however, the closed, mar clo closed quote mark goes in front of the citation while the end punctuation goes after the citation. So as it shows here, uh, in this case, we have a quote, a quote that you're, that's being cited, okay? Uh, and then end quote is in front of the uh, citation, then the citation, then the period. This is the only time, let me repeat, this is the only time when it is acceptable to put the end punctuation of a quotation outside of quotation marks. If we want to get advanced with this, uh, many artful writers are able to cite their sources without using the parenthetical citations. Particularly easier now in the era of more common internet sourcing. Okay, when you don't have to worry about page numbers, it's a lot easier to be able to use uh, in, about to use citations that are uh, organic within your text as opposed to tacking on a parenthetical citation at the end. Including the source of the information within the text is better for the flow for the reader than the in-text parenthetical citations. There are a couple examples here. Uh, author name explains that, and then put that in the cited information in your own words. Okay, that's again for 
uh, information you're drawing from a source when uh, you're putting in your own words. Again, if you're quoting, if you're quoting someone, you can still do that by using it as a signal phrase. Okay, so put the site information in quotes, and then your signal phrase is says so and so. Okay, or whatever signal phrase you want to use to deter denote uh, who's speaking in that quotation. Okay. Now, if a source is being quoted by someone else, however, you will need to include the source where you found the quote in a parenthetical citation. Okay. So wherever you found that, whatever source you found that quote is what you're going to need to put into your uh, MLA parenthetical citation. So in the example here, you have a quote with cited information, then the signal phrase, a search source name. And then after that, you have, as you can see here, we have the uh, quote, the uh, citation rather, quoted by, uh, and then the source, the author name of the uh, source and then the page number where this particular quote came from okay so those are a couple of approaches that you have to in-text citation we're going to do a brief citation exercise here okay uh i've got four articles here okay uh, they are peppered within what's my chapter 7, but I believe it is your chapter 19 if you're using the online and the unabridged versions of the textbook. There are four excerpts from four separate articles that are located in sections of the chapter covering introductions and telling an anecdote. Okay? Uh, I have the four titles here. Okay? So the four titles are The Legalization of Prostitution. Uh, next one is called Mao More Than Ever. Next one is called Sitting Comfort, The Impact of Different Chairs on Anxiety. And the last one is Sex, Lies, and Conversation. Okay? So what you're going to be doing for this exercise, and post it to questions to the professor, so I can see you're doing it. Choose one of these excerpts, read it briefly, and then write a simulated sentence citing the excerpt. Write the sentence in a way that uses a parenthetical citation, then write it again with an integrated citation. Okay, so basically you're going to be uh, writing out two different ways of integrating the information you pull. Okay, now uh, each one of these has bibliographical information uh, supplied at the bottom of the excerpts. You'll have the author names and the page numbers if applicable. Okay, uh, if they are online, if they are web sources uh, it will give you uh, it will not give you page numbers it'll give you URLs okay but you need to figure out how you what you need to do with that information to cite it okay now here's what I'm going to do I'm going to go ahead and read you the four excerpts so you know what you're looking for however it's going to be up to you to find that uh, bibliographical information find them in the text and use the bibliographical information to create your citations all right, so here we go. Uh, here's the first one, legalization of prostitution. Okay. Uh, prostitution is the contractual barter of sex favors, usually sexual intercourse for monetary considerations without any emotional attachment between the partners. Whenever this topic is mentioned, people usually shy away from it because they are thinking of the actions involved in this profession. The purpose of this paper, however, is not to talk about these services, but to discuss the social, economic, and legal issues behind prostitution. All right, the next one. Uh, this is Mao more than ever. Shaoshan is a small village found in the valley of the Hunan province where, a little over a century ago, Mao Zedong was born. The first thing heard in Shaoshan is the music, and the music is ins inescapable. Suspended from posts towering over Mao's childhood home are loudspeakers from which the same tune is emitted over and over, a hit of the Cultural Revolution titled We Love You Mao. The Chinese people were faced with an incredibly difficult situation in 1976 following the death of Mao Zedong. What was China to do now that the man whom millions accepted as the leader of their country's rebirth to greatness had passed away? China was in mourning within moments of the announcement. Although Mao rarely had been seen in public during the five years preceding his death, he was nevertheless the only leader that China had known since the Communist Army swept triumphantly into Peking and proclaimed the People's Republic 27 years earlier. He was not only the originator of China's socialist revolution, but its guide, its teacher, and its prophet. Common sense foretold of the impossibility of erasing communism and replacing Chairman Mao. 
he departed the world with his succession and China's future uncertain. With his death, historians and reporters around the world offered predictions of what was to become of China. They saw an instant end to Maoist theory. Through a careful examination of Chinese life, both under and after Mao, it is clear that the critics of 1976 were naive in their prophecies and that Mao Zedong still remains the central, dominant figure in Chinese political culture today. So here's the next one. This one is uh, Sitting Comfort, The Impact of Different Chairs on Anxiety. <clears throat> All right. Kutash and Northrop studied the comfort of family members in the ICU waiting room. They found that no matter the situation, waiting rooms are stressful for the patients and their families, and it is the nursing staff's job to comfort both. From this emotional distress, many family members judged the waiting room furniture as uncomfortable and only talked about it in a negative context. From this study, we have learned that there is a direct relationship between a person's emotional state and how that person perceives the physical state he or she is in, such as sitting in a chair. Is this relationship true in reverse as well? Can the way a person perceives his or her phys present physical state, such as sitting in a chair, affect his or her emotional state? This is the question that the present study sought to answer. And here's the last one, sex, lies, and conversation. I was addressing a small gathering in a suburban Virginia living room, a women's group that invited men to join them. Throughout the evening, one man had been particularly talkative, frequently offering ideas and anecdotes while his wife sat silently behind him on the couch. Toward the end of the evening, I com commented that women frequently complain that their husbands don't talk to them. This man quickly concurred. He gestured toward his wife and said, she's the talker in our family. The room burst into laughter. The man looked puzzled and hurt. It's true, he explained. When I come home from work, I have nothing to say. If she didn't keep the conversation going, we spend the whole evening in silence. This episode crystallizes the irony that although American men tend to talk more than women in public situations, they often talk less at home. And this pattern is wreaking havoc with marriage. All right, so uh, we'll give you guys about 10 minutes here. Go ahead and pause the lecture. Uh, and go to questions professor and pick one of these uh, ex excerpts that you want to cite okay uh, write a sentence using some information from one of those excerpts uh, cited in both a parenthetical citation and in an integrated citation that is one that doesn't use the parenthetical uh, addition okay uh, so 10 minutes go ahead and pause me and do that exercise
All right, now we're back. All right, so uh, hopefully you have your uh, uh, citation uh, exercise posted. Let's move on to the actual work cited page, okay? So there's, there's a lot of variance that I've been seeing when people have supplied me with works cited pages thus far in the class. Uh, we need to cover what the actual format is supposed to be, okay? And this isn't just you guys. I'm seeing a lot of variance in my uh, 1302s as well. Uh, a lot of people just either didn't learn it or just ignore it and come up with their own version of what they think the, the work cited should look like, okay? Now, there is a standard MLA format for creating your works cited page, okay? requires the following. First off, the page must be separate from the last page of the accompanying essay. Additionally, for the assignment, the works cited page does not count toward the essay's page count. Okay? Uh, I've received a lot of essays where people just hit enter a lot of times trying to get the works cited page to start on the next page. There is a much easier way to do that that is a little bit more consistent depend, uh, and will remain the same no matter what machine or system is reading the file. Uh, what you simply do is when you reach the end of your uh, essay, before you start typing the works cited page, you insert what you insert a page break. Okay, uh, in Word there is an insert uh, menu that you can access, uh, and when you go to that insert menu, one of the things you can insert is page breaks. Okay, so insert a page break; it'll automatically advance you to the next, the top of the next page, and then type start typing your works cited. Now if you have that page break programmed in, it'll break the page and put it on its own page no matter what system is reading that file. Okay, Some systems go wonky when it comes to uh, hitting enter a lot of times, the spacing goes off, the spa uh, it doesn't count everything, maybe it makes the enters uh, too short or too long, whatever. Uh, if you need to uh, Start, you need to start your works cited on its own pa separate page. Insert a page break to start it. Next one. Listings must be in alphabetical order based on the first word in each listing. Uh, the exception to this is articles such as A, N, or the. Uh, articles like that do not count toward alphabetical order. Okay? So do not put anything that, uh, starting with the title where the uh, first word is the, in the T's unless the next word starts with a T. Okay? Uh, so the listings must be in alphabetical order based on the first word in each listing. For the most part, this will usually be names. Okay? But if you don't have a human author, uh, then, the title, then it's going to be the title of the article or the title of the source. Okay? Uh, that's one thing I need to point out here is that uh, if you have a non-human author, Nine times out of ten, that author is also the one who published where that uh, source comes from. So you do not need to include the author, okay? This goes also for uh, newspaper editorial boards, okay? The editorial boards are representatives of the publication, so I assume that it's the publication that is the author, okay? So do not uh, put an author reference saying edit, uh, editors or whatever. Okay, uh, on that type of a listing, you want to start with the title. Also, if by some chance you have a non-human author who is not the publisher, okay, and you need to cite the non-human author, uh, say it's like a writing group or something like that, you do not treat a non-human author the, the you do not treat their name the same as a human author. Human authors they show you having to do last name first name. Okay, that's standard. If you have a non-human author, you cannot do that. Okay, because non-human authors do not have family names. Okay, so if you have a non-human author, you're simply going to put out the name of the author the way it normally the name of that non-human author the way it normally appears. Uh, a good example of this is. Uh, number of students uh, last year when they were doing it. Uh, citations from the uh, US Department of Education okay too many people used a listing that started with education comma United States Department of do not do that okay do not do that 
Okay. Now, at their base, each listing in the Works Cited page must include the title of the work, the publication or publishing company or website which presented the work, and the date of the work's initial publication. So we need to know when that work is coming from, who it's coming from, and what that work actually is. Okay? That's the most, that's the most minimal information that you need. So let's take a look at a basic general template here. Uh, this is the template that shows up in the MLA style guide at Purdue OWL. Okay, so let's take a look at this here. Uh, and I actually should note here that some of this stuff should be in italics. Okay, so let's start off here. Okay, we have the author's name. Okay, uh, the author is going to have a period after it. Then we have the title. Uh, that would be the article title if you're using a, a shorter article. If you're using an entire book, then you just skip that and go straight to title of container. Do not list container for standalone books such as novels. Okay, uh, so this is this is going to be where the title is going to be. Okay, uh, title of container is going to be in italics. Okay, uh, the title here is going to be in quotation marks. But this title, if it's a larger work, is going to be in italics. Okay. Afterward, you talk about other contributors such as translators or editors. Okay. Uh, and this is separated by commas, by the way. Then comma version, which would be the edition. Uh, if you have a volume number or you have a uh, uh, edition number. Okay. Uh, the next one is the number, which is the volume and or issue number. Okay, comma there, then the publisher. Okay, uh, comma the publication date. Okay, comma location, which is the pages, the paragraphs, uh, numbers, the URL if it's a website, or the DOI if it is a database article. We're going to talk about that in a second. Okay, then we have the second container's title also in italics. Okay. Uh, other contributors, version, number, publisher, publication date, location, and then follow this with a date of access if applicable. Okay, this is primarily for web sources. Uh, and in this case, second container's title is typically going to be, uh, it's typically going to be a database name. Okay, so this is just a general overview of what the listing should look like. Also, take note of the spacing here. Take note of that spacing there, okay? Starts at the author with the author is going to be flush with uh, aligned with the left hand margin. Okay, get through that first line. Okay, the next line is going to start one task space in that is what's referred to as a hanging indent. Okay, MLA formatting and APA, honestly, but mainly focusing on MLA requires this. Okay, for works cited pages, it requires this. All right, so we're going to take a look at the Purdue OWL MLA guide to work cited. Okay, uh, they also have a guide for citations, but it basically says the same thing that I told you, just in greater detail. All right, so I'm going to skip that for now. But I want to take a look at uh, these four particular pages. These are the uh, Purdue OWL uh, MLA style guides. Uh, these will give you the style guides for every type of possible work cited. Okay, uh, it's separated under four different pages. One of them is going to be for strictly for books, and it'll tell you how to handle different situations with books, such as multiple authors, translators, uh, anything like that. Uh, the next one is periodicals, which includes paper journals, magazines, newspapers. Okay, uh, gives you every scenario that you'll come up with. Uh, third one is electronic sources, which would include database journals, and this also includes websites. So this gives you the way to do websites. And then the fourth one is other common sources. Okay, uh, this has a wide gamut of things. It includes uh, live presentations. This includes how to cite television or films. Uh, this includes uh, audio, video, media, other types of uh, media files. Uh, this is where you find how to cite Twitter. This is where how you where you find the way to cite YouTube, where you find how to cite Netflix. 
how do you how do you cite uh, Spotify or any other type of streaming service? Okay. So now let's take a look at each of these pages individually. All right. So here we are at Purdue Owl. Okay. Uh, and here's what we're going to be looking at. This is the first one. Here is the books. Okay. Uh, let's go ahead and read through this. When you're gathering book sources. Be sure to make note of the following bibliographic items. The author's name, other contributors such as translators or editors, the book's title, editions of the book, publication date, the publisher, and the pagination. Okay. The 8th edition of the MLA Handbook highlights principles over prescriptive practices. Essentially, a writer will need to take note of primary elements in every source such as author, title, etc., and then assort them in a general format. Thus, by using this methodology, a writer will be able to cite any source regardless of whether it's included in this list. Okay. Uh, so please note these changes in the new edition. Commas are used instead of periods between publisher, publication date, and pagination. Medium is no longer necessary. It used to be that you had to list what type of media it was. Uh, if you had to cite that it was a book or a website or a magazine or whatever. Containers are now a part of the MLA process. Commas should be used after container titles. DOIs should be used instead of URLs when available. This is for the database articles. Uh, use the term accessed instead of listing the date or the abbreviation ND. All right, so uh, by the way, ND stands for no date. Okay. All right, let's, let's take a look at, again, that's that general format that I showed you before. Okay. Here's the basic book format. Okay. The author's name or a book with a single author's name appears in last name, first name format. Basic form for a book citation is like this. Last name, first name, period. Title of book in italics, period. City of publication, comma, publisher, comma, publication date. Okay. Here is another note. This is new to uh, most recent MLA standards. City of publication should only be used if the book was published before 1900. If the publisher has offices in more than one country, or if the publisher is unknown in North America. Okay. So if it is a major publishing house, you do not need to worry about uh, city of publication. Everybody knows that publishing house. Uh, if it is a, a minor publishing house that maybe is kind of small, or if it's a foreign publishing house, or if it's a publishing house where there's a distinct uh, difference between uh, offices. Okay then you need to cite it. Also, if you're citing a book that's uh, published prior to 1900, okay, you'll want to note the publication city. Okay. So here we have books with one author. Uh, so if you see here, we have an author name. Uh, we have the, t the, title of the title of the book. Okay. And then we have the publisher and the date. Same here. Author, title, publisher, date. Uh, next one, books with more than one author. When a book has two authors, order the authors in the same way they are presented in the book. Start by listing the first name that appears on the book in last name, first name format. Subsequent author names appear in normal order, first name, last name format. Okay? So for two authors, you have first author in last name, first name, then the second author, normal. Uh, you have the title, you have publisher, and the date. If there are three or more authors, list only the first author followed by the phrase et al, which is Latin for and others, in place of the subsequent author's names. Note that there is a period after al and et al. Also note that there is never a period after the et in et al. Okay? So we have this example here. We have a uh, author, last name, first name, okay, with, middle, with a middle name, comma, et al. So this is uh, three or more authors. Okay. Then we have the title of the text, the title of the book. We have the uh, publisher and the date. Next one: two or more books by the same author. List works alphabetically by title. Again, remember to ignore articles like a, an, or the. Provide the author's name in last name, first name format for the first entry only. For each subsequent entry by the auth same author, use three hyphens and a period. Okay. So here we have uh, two books by William J. Palmer. Okay, we have first one gives the author's name, then he has the uh, title of the book, publisher, date. 
The second one, by also by William J. Palmer, three hyphens in a period, denotes that this is also made by the same author. You notice that the title, The Films of the 80s, Social History, it is in alphabetical order because the first word of the previous title was Dickens. First word that counts in the second title is Films. So D comes before F. Then we have the Publisher and the Date. Incidentally, you've seen these Utah State UP, Southern Illinois UP, that is, uh, UP stands for University, Pu University Publisher. Okay? Book by a corporate author or organization. A corporate author may include a commission, a committee, a government agency, or a group that does not identify individual members on title page. List the names of corporate authors in the place where an author's name typically appears at the beginning of the entry. Okay? And again, it has to be in the proper way that it appears. So, in this case, American Allergy Association. It's not association, comma, American Allergy. Okay? So we have the uh, corporation name. We have the title of the book, publisher, date. When the author and publisher are the same, skip the author and list the title first. Then list the corporate author only as the publisher. So we have title of the book, then the publisher slash author, and then the date. Primarily, you will find this used for uh, reference, reference books for uh, particular companies or for pamphlets that are produced by particular companies. All right, book with no author, list by title of the book. Incorporate these entries alphabetically just as you would with works that include the author name. For example, the following entry might appear between entries of works written by Sean Dean and Jonathan Forsyth. Okay. In this case, we have the Encyclopedia of Indiana. Okay. So we just have the title in italics, then the publisher and the date. Remember that for an in-text citation of a book with no author, you should provide the name of the work and the signal phrase and the page number in parentheses. You may also use a shortened version of the title of the book accompanied by the page number. Okay. Uh, then we have a translated book. If you want to emphasize the work rather than the translator, cite as you would any other book. Add translate by and follow with the name of the translator. Okay. Uh, this can be important sometimes because there is variance in translations based on interpretation of uh, intent and language. Okay. So if you want to emphasize the differences between translations, then you'd want to list the translator first. Okay. So in this case, this is listing author first, okay? Then we have the title in italics, followed by the translator, uh, translated by, and then publisher, date. If you want to focus on the translation, list the translator as the author. In place of the author's name, the translator's name appears. His or her name is followed by the label translator. If the author of the book does not appear in the title of the book, include the name with a by after the title of the book and before the publisher. Note that this type of citation is less common and should only be used for papers or writing in which translation plays a central role. Okay? So if the translate if the variance in translation is more important, uh, list the translator. List the translator first. Okay? So this is the uh, list uh, listing for the same book as that first one, but now this time we have the translator first. Okay, so so uh, last name, first name, then the translator, uh, title by author, comma, publisher, comma, date. Okay, for a republished book. Books may be republished due to popularity without becoming a new edition. New editions are typically revisions of the original work. For books that originally appeared at an earlier date and that have been republished at a later one, insert the original publication date before the publication information. Uh, this is not the same as new editions. This is basically if the book is just republished without adding any material. Okay? So, in this case, we have author name, then we have the title in italics, original publication date, then current publisher, current date. Okay? An edition of a book. There are two types of editions in book publishing. A book that's been published more than once in different editions, and a book that is prepared by someone other than the author. So for a subsequent edition, cite the book as you normally would, but add the number of the edition after the title. So here are your authors. And then we have the title of the, the work. Uh, list as third edition, publisher date. 
For a work prepared by an editor, cite the book as you normally would, but add the editor after the title with the label edited by. So we have title or the author, title in italics, comma, edited by editor name, uh, publisher, date. Note that the format for citing sources with important contributors with editor-like roles follows the same basic template. Okay. Finally, in the event that the source features a contributor that cannot be described with a past tense verb and the word by, you may instead use a noun followed by a comma, like so. Okay. So, in this case, you're listing a guest editor. Okay. Uh, if you're working with an anthology or collection, to cite the entire anthology or collection, list by the editor, followed by a comma and editor for, or for multiple editors, editors. This sort of entry is somewhat rare. If you're citing a particular piece within an anthology, uh, you're going to look at the next section. So this is referencing the entire anthology. Okay, uh, You're listing it by editor. Work in an anthology reference or collection. Uh, works may include an essay in an edited collection or anthology or a chapter of a book. Basic form for this sort of citation goes like this. And it's going to be kind of similar to what you've seen for, for periodicals. Uh, last name, first name for the author, the title of the essay in, com in quotation marks, title of the collection, which it appears in, in italics, edited by editor name, publisher, year, and then the page range of the entry. So here's a couple of examples of that. All right. Note on Crawford's referencing several items from one anthology. If you cite more than one essay from the same edited collection, MLA indicates you may cross-reference within your works cited list in order to avoid writing out the publishing information for each separate essay. You should consider the option if you have several references from a single text. To do so, include a separate entry for the entire collection. Okay. Then for each individual essay from the collection, list the author's name in the last name, first name format, title of the essay, Editor's last name and the page range. Okay. Please note when cross referencing items in the works cited list, alphabetical order should be maintained for the entire list. All right. So here's some examples of literary works. Okay. Uh, poems or short stories. Uh, author, uh, poem, title, uh, collection, t collection title in italics, the editor, publisher, date page range. Uh, if the specific literary work is part of an, the author's own collection, all the works have the same author, then there will be no editor to reference. Okay. For an article in a reference book, for entries in encyclopedias, dictionaries, and other reference works, cite the entry name as you would any other work in a collection, but do not include the publisher information. Also, if the reference book is organized alphabetically, as most are, do not list the volume or the page number or the, of the article or item. Okay? For a multi-volume work, when citing only one volume of a multi-volume work, include the volume number after the work's title or after the work's editor or translator. Okay? When citing more than one volume of a multi-volume work, cite the total number of volumes in the work. Also, be sure your in-text citation and your in-text citations provide both the volume number and page numbers. If the volume you're using has its own title, cite the book without referring to the other volumes as if it were an independent publication. Okay, now we got for individual parts of a book. When citing an introduction, a preface, a foreword, or an afterword, write the name of the authors of the piece you are citing. Then give the name of the part being cited, which should not be italicized or enclosed in quotation marks. In italics, provide the name of the work and the name of the author, the introduction, preference, for, forward, afterward. Finish the citation with the details of publication and page range. Okay. If the writer of the piece is different from the author of the complete work, then write the full name of the principal's work author after the word by. For example, if you were to cite Hugh Dalziel, Duncan's introduction of Kenneth Burke's book, Permanence and Change, you would write the entry as follows. So you see you have Duncan's name first, then introduction, not in quotation marks, uh, Permanence and Change, Nambi of Purpose, that's in italics, by Kenneth Burke, date, third edition, pub, that's the original publication date, okay, 
We are at the third edition. We have the publisher. We have the the current publication date, and then these are the page numbers in which that introduction appears. Okay, books before published before 1900. Original copies of books published before 1900 are usually defined by their place of publication rather than the publisher. Unless you're using a newer edition, cite the city of publication where you would normally cite the publisher. Okay? If you are citing the Bible, italicize the Bible and follow it with the version you are using. Remember that in your text parenthetical citation, uh, that your in-text parenthetical citation should include the name of the specific edition of the Bible, followed by an abbreviation of the book, the chapter, and verses. Okay? So here's three examples of different versions of the Bible being, set, being placed on a works cited page. And we have a government publication. Uh, cite the author of the publication if the author is identified. Otherwise, start with the name of the national government, followed by the agency, including a subdivisions or agencies that serves as the organizational author. For congressional documents, be sure to include the number of the Congress and the session when the hearing was held or resolution passed, as well as the report number. U.S. government documents are typically published by the government printing office. Okay? So as you see here, this is uh, proceedings of the Senate uh, for specifically the Committee on Energy and National Re Natural Resources. Okay? So United States Congress, Senate, Committee on Energy and National Resources. So it starts with the con national government, uh, agency, subdivision, subdivision. Then we have title, government printing office, uh, year, and then we have the listings here, 110th Congress, first session, Senate Report 111-8. This is the, the all needed for identifying information for congressional proceedings. Okay, citing a pamphlet. Cite the title and publication information for the pamphlet just as you would a book without an author. Pamphlets and promotional materials commonly feature corporate authors, commissions, committees, or other groups that do not provide individual group member names. If the pamphlet you are citing has no author, cite is directed below. If your pamphlet has an author or a corporate author, put the name of the author, last name, first name format, or corporate author in the place where the author name typically appears at the beginning of the entry. Okay? And then finally, on this page, dissertations and master's theses. Dissertations and master's theses may be used as sources when, whether published or not. Unlike previous editions, MLA 8 specifies no difference in style for published slash unpublished works. The main elements of a dissertation citation are the same as those for a book. Author name, title italicized, and publication date. Conclude with an indication of the document type, such as PhD dissertation. The degree granting institution may be included before the document type, though this is not required. If a dissertation was accessed through an online repository, include it as a second container after all the other elements. Okay. All right, so here's those three. All right, so we're going to go ahead and uh, we're going to skip the periodicals. However, I am going to post that link to. Uh, eCampus, and we're going to move on to the next one's going to be electronic, which is going to be what most of you guys are going to be using. All right, here we go with uh, electronic sources. Okay. Uh, eighth edition of the MLA handbook highlights principles over prescriptive practices, so on and so forth. We, we looked at that before. Uh, this guide will highlight a few concerns when citing digital sources in MLA style. So let's take a look at this. Best practices for managing online sources. Excuse me. Because online information can change or disappear, it is always a good idea to keep personal copies of important electronic information whenever possible. Downloading or even printing key documents ensures you have a stable backup. You can also use the bookmark function in your web browser in order to build an easy to access reference for all of your project sources, though this will not help you if the information has changed or deleted. It is also wise to keep a record of when you first consult with each online source. MLA uses the phrase access to denote what, which date you access the web page when available or necessary. It is not required to do so, but it is encouraged, especially when there is no copyright date listed on a website. Next part is an important note on the use of URLs. Include a URL or web address to help readers locate your sources. Because web addresses are not static, that is, they change often, 
and because documents sometimes appear in multiple places on the web or on multiple databases. MLA encourages the use of citing containers such as YouTube, JSTOR, Spotify, or Netflix in order to easily access and verify sources. However, MLA only requires the www address, so eliminate all HTTPS when citing URLs. Many scholarly journal articles found in databases include a DOI, which stands for a Digital Object Identifier. If a DOI is available, cite the DOI number instead of the URL. Online newspapers and magazines sometimes include a permalink, which is a shortened, stable version of a URL. Look for a share or cite this button to see if a source includes a permalink. If you can find a permalink, use that instead of a URL. Okay, look at some abbreviations commonly used electronic sources. If page numbers are not available, use pair or paris to denote paragraph numbers. Use these in place of the P or PP abbreviation. Pair would be used for a single paragraph, while pairs would be used for a span of two or more paragraphs. Okay. All right, let's look at the basic style for citations of electronic sources, including online databases. Here are some common features you should try to find before citing electronic sources in MLA style. Not every web page will provide all the following information. However, collect as much of the following information as possible. So you need author and or editor names, if available, last names first, article name in quotation marks, title of the website, project, or book in italics, any version numbers are available, including editions, revisions, posting dates, volumes, or issue numbers, publisher information, including the publisher name and publishing date. Take note of any page numbers or paragraph numbers. DOI if available, otherwise a URL or permalink. Date you access the material. While not required, saving this information is highly recommended, especially when dealing with pages that change frequently or do not have a visible copyright date. Okay, we're back to that base format again. So let's start looking at these sources. So starting with an entire website. When citing an entire website, follow the same format as listed above, but include a compiler name if no single author is available. So, uh, starting with the author or compiler name if available, then we have the name of the site in italics, version number if available, name of institution or organization affiliated with the site, which is the sponsor or publisher, the date of resource creation if available, the DOI preferred, otherwise include a URL or permalink, the date of access if applicable. Editor, author, or compiler name. Oh, well, I was just, I just read that. So here, uh, take a look at the uh, two examples here. So we have one that ha does not have a compiler name. Okay. So this is uh, actually the listing for Purdue Owl. Okay. So you have that italicized uh, website name. Uh, this is the sponsor of it, the Writing Lab and Owl at Purdue and Purdue U. Uh, date, and then the uh, URL, the permalink, accessed, accessed, and then the date. All right. Course or department websites give the instructor name, then list the title of the course or the school catalog designation for the course in italics. Give the appropriate department and school names as well, following the course title. All right, let's take a look at a page on a website. Now we look at individual pages. List the author or alias if known, followed by an indication of the specific page or article being referenced. Usually the title of the page or article appears in a header at the top of the page. Follow this with the information covered above for entire websites. If the publisher is the same as the website name, only list it once. So you see we have a, uh, one page here, how to make vegetarian chili from eHow, okay? That's how you would cite it. Uh, here's an article on athletes foot from WebMD. And this is how you would cite it. If you're citing an ebook, citations for ebooks closely resemble those for physical books. Simply indicate that the book in question is an ebook by putting the term ebook in the version slot of the MLA template. After the author, the title of the source, the title of the container, and the names of any other contributors. If the ebook is formatted for a specific reader device or service, you can indicate this by treating the information the same way you would treat a physical book's edition number. 
Often this will mean replacing ebook with app or service edition. Note that the MLA considers the term ebook to refer to publications formatted specifically for reading with an ebook reader device, such as a Kindle or a corresponding web application. These ebooks will not have URLs or DOIs. If you are citing book content from an ordinary web page with the URL, use the a page on a website format above. Okay, so these are specifically for use for ebooks. Next, we have an image, including a painting, sculpture, or photograph. Provide the artist's name, the work of an art italicized, the name, date of creation, the institution and city where the work is housed. Follow this initial entry with the name of the website in italics and the date of access. Okay? So here's an example of a uh, painting of the family of Charles IV from 1800 by Francisco Goya. tells you where that piece of artwork is housed, a uh, website where you would access a photo of it, uh, the URL of that photo, and then the access date. If the work is cited it is available on the web only, then provide the name of the artist, the title of the work, and then follow the citation format for a website. If the work is posted via a username, use that username for the author. So this would be if you were to cite anything from, for instance, DeviantArt. Okay, you'd want to use this format. We have an article in a web magazine. Provide the author name, article name, quotation marks, title of the web magazine in italics, publisher name, publication date, URL, and the date of access. Okay, not that much different from a standard uh, periodical. We have an article in an online scholarly journal. If it is online only, uh, that does not make use of page numbers, indicate the URL or under lo other location information. If it is an on online scholarly journal that also appears in print, you need to find out what the print page range is uh, for that article and include that in with the listing. If it is a journal that appears both online and in print. Okay, then articles for online databases. Cite online databases such as LexisNexis, ProQuest, JSTOR, or ScienceDirect, and other subscription services as containers. Thus, provide the title of the database in this italicize before the DOI or URL. If a DOI is not provided, use the URL instead. Provide the date of access if you wish. Okay? So we have a couple examples of uh, articles with DOIs. All right. So, uh... I'm going to take a look at those. Give you a second here. <laughs> All right, then we have email, including email interviews. Give the author of the message followed by the subject in quote line in quotation marks. State to whom the message was sent with the phrase received by and the recipient's name. Include the date the message was sent. Use standard capitalization. <laughs> and then here we have if you're citing a listserv, discussion group, or blog posting. Cite web postings as you would a standard web entry. Provide the author of the work, the title of the posting in question marks, the website name in italics, the publisher, and the posting date. Follow with the date of access. Include screen names as author names when author name is not known. If both names are known, place the author's name in brackets. Okay. So for these types of listings, they're going to prioritize uh, usernames. Okay. We have a tweet. This is kind of funny. Be begin with the user's Twitter handle and place the author's name. Next, place the tweet in its entirety in quotations, inserting a period after the tweet within the quotations. Include the date and time of posting using the reader's time zone. Separate the date and time with a comma and end with a period. Include the date accessed if you deem necessary. Okay? So you can see here's a couple examples here. Again, they put the entire text of the tweet into the... Uh, they put the entire text of the tweet into the listing. Okay. We have a YouTube video. Video and audio sources need to be documented using the same basic guidelines for citing print sources in MLA style. Include as much descriptive formation as necessary to help readers understand the type of nature of the source you're citing. The author's name is the same as the uploader. Only cite the author once. If the author is different from the uploader, cite the author's name before the title. Okay. So, 
Uh, here's a couple examples of YouTube videos being cited. And then lastly, we have a comment on a website or article. List the username as the author. Use the phrase comment on before the title. Use quotation marks around the article title, name the publisher, date, time listed on near, near the comment, and the URL. Okay, so here is the comment here. All right, so we're going to go ahead and take a look at uh, the fourth of the pages now. Uh, this is going to be the other, other sources. All right, so now we are at other common sources. Okay. Several sources have multiple means for citation, especially those that appear in varied formats. Films, DVDs, television shows, music, published and unpublished interviews, interviews over email, published and unpublished conference proceedings. The following section discusses these sorts of citations as well as others not covered in the print periodical and electronic sources resources. All right. So let's see what we got here. We have an interview to start. Interviews typically fall into two categories, print or broadcast published and unpublished, personal interviews. Although interviews may appear in other similar formats, such as an email format or as a web document. Okay? So, let's start with personal interviews. Personal interviews refer to those interviews that you conduct yourself. List the interview by the name of the interviewee, include the descriptor personal interview and the date of the interview. So it's a very simple format for citing these interviews. For published interviews, print or broadcast, list the interview by the full name of the interviewee. If the name of the interview is part of a larger work like a book, a television program, or a film series, place the title of the interview in quotation marks and place the title of the larger work in italics. If the interview appears as an independent title, italicize it. For books, include the author or editor name after the book title. Note, if the interview form from which you quote does not feature a title, add the descriptor interview by unformatted after the interviewee's name and before the interviewer's name. Alright, so here's a couple examples of that. Alright, next, online only published interviews. List the interview by the name of the interviewee. If the interview has a title, place it in quotation marks. Cite the remainder of the entry as you would other exclusive web content. Place the name of the website in italics. Give the publisher name or sponsor, the publication date, and the URL. Now, if the interview from which you quote does not feature a title, add the descriptor interview by unformatted after the interviewee's name and before the interviewer's name. Okay, so here is an example of an online only published interview. And we have speeches, lectures, or other oral presentations, including conference presentations. So, Again, you start with the speaker's name, then give the title of the speech, if any, in quotation marks. Follow with the title of the particular conference or meeting, and then the name of the organization. Name the venue and its city, if the name of the city is not listed in the venue's name. Use the descriptor that appropriately expresses the type of presentation, such as address, lecture, reading, keynote speech, guest lecture, or conference presentation. Okay, here's an example of that. All right, so panel discussions and question and answer sessions. The MLA handbook makes a distinction between the formal rehearsed portion of a presentation and the informal discussion that often occurs after. To format an entry for a panel discussion or question and answer session, treat the panel members or speakers as authors by listing them first. If these people are formally listed as panelists, indicate this by following their names with a comma and the title panelists. Follow with the title of the discussion, or if there is no title, a simple description. In the latter case, don't capitalize the description. Follow this with the title of the conference or event, and with the date and the location. So here we go. Here's a, one of those question and answer sessions. Treat recorded discussions as instances of the appropriate medium, e.g. if you want to cite a recording of a panel discussion hosted on YouTube, cite it the same way you would cite an ordinary online video. Okay. Then we have published conference proceedings. Cite published conference proceedings like a book. If the date and location of the conference are not part of the published title, add this information after the published proceedings title. To cite a presentation from published conference proceedings, begin with the presenter's name. Place the name of the presentation in quotation marks. Follow with publication information for the conference proceedings. 
All right, then next we have a painting, sculpture, or photograph. And this is if you're actually uh, going to it. This is not cov uh, covering uh, internet sources here, uh, if you get it off the internet. So, provide the artist's name, the title of the artwork in italics, and the date of composition. Finally, provide the name of the institution that houses the artwork, followed by the location of the institution. If the location is not listed in the name of the institution, such as the Art Institute of Chicago. Okay? So here's that uh, Francisco Goya work again. Uh, this is how you handle that listing. If the medium and or materials, such as oil on canvas, are important to the reference, you can include this information at the end of the entry. However, it's not required. Okay. For photographic reproductions of artwork, such as images of artwork in a book, treat the book or website as a container. Remember that for a second container, the title is listed first before the contributors. Cite the bibliographic information as above, followed by the information for the source in which the photograph appears, including page or reference numbers, plate, figure, so on and so forth. If you viewed the artwork on the museum's website, treat the name of the website as a container and include the website's publisher and the URL at the end of the citation. Omit publisher information if it is the same as the name of the website. Note the period after the date below rather than the comma. This is because the date refers to the painting's original creation rather than to its publication on the website. Thus, MLA format considers it an optional element. Okay. So now we have a song or album. Okay. Music can be cited multiple ways. Mainly, this depends on the container that you access the music from. Generally, citations begin with the artist's name. They might also be listed by composers or performers. Otherwise, list composer and performer information after the album title. Put individual song titles in quotation marks. Album names are italicized. Provide the name of the recording manufacturer followed by the publication date. If information such as record label or name of album is unavailable from your source, do not list that information. Okay? So we have some examples here. This first one is citing something from Spotify. Okay? Uh, we have this uh, song called Skin by Ray Morris. Okay? Uh, Keep in, take, if you notice here, we're not listing the uh, artist last name, first name, because this artist could also include single name artists or groups. So they're considered to be uh, corporate authors. So you want to stick with just a straight up uh, entry for their name. Okay. Then we have title of the song in quotation marks, the title of the album in italics, Atlantic Records is the publisher, 2014 is the date. Second container is Spotify, and then this URL is generated by Spotify if you want to, if you hit the share button, uh, and there's an option for copy URL. To get this URL uh, so that you can see it, all you need to do is copy URL and then paste it to Word or Notepad or something that allows you to see text, okay? And we have online album. Okay, if you're citing the entire album, okay, or if you're, you're citing a, an album that is available online, okay. Uh, so in this case, this is the song Pray You Catch Me by Beyonce from Lemonade, okay. So the album title is italicized, and we have the record, record company, the date of publication, and then the URL for the album. If you're citing a CD, if, if you're still using those. You have the artist, artist name, title of the song, uh, title of the album in italics, and then the uh, record company and the date. Then we have films or movies. List films by their title. Include the name of the director, the film studio, or distributor, and the release year. If relevant, list performer names after the director's name. Okay. Uh, so you can see what we have here. Uh, they're looking specifically at uh, particular performances in this. Okay? And we have the directors, uh, the publication date, and the, or the studio, and the date. Okay? Now, here's the other thing. Uh, this is a bit of a, uh, this is a bit of a sensitive subject here. Uh, you notice that the example they used here was Speed Racer. Uh, we have Lana Wachowski and Lily Wachowski, okay? Uh, here's the thing, though. Uh, Speed Racer was made before 
before they came out as transgender. Okay, uh, the Wachowski sisters used to be the Wachowski brothers. You may recall this from uh, because they were the directors of the Matrix uh, as the Wachowski brothers. Okay. Uh, this has become a uh, bone of contention in terms of MLA is how do you handle uh, how do you handle a transgender author uh, if they've got works before and after transition okay do you maintain uh, the way that they're credited in the old one and dead name them or do you uh, use their new identities okay uh, Unfortunately, right now it's a it's an extremely gray area in MLA, and it looks like the way that uh, Owl is opting to go is to use their current identities as opposed to uh, dead names. Okay, so uh, just keep that in mind. All right, it's very rare that you'll encounter this, but it is something that you will that you may encounter. Okay. To emphasize specific performers or directors, begin the citation with the name of the desired performer or director, followed by the appropriate title for that person. Okay? So, if you were focusing on directors uh, and you have this listing for Star Wars, okay, Star Wars Episode 4, New Hope, uh, he's going to list it with the director first because that's who he wants to emphasize. Okay? Uh, then we have television shows. We have two different ways of doing television shows, and it all comes down to uh, whether you are uh, viewing it on first broadcast or if you are viewing a recording of it. Okay. For recorded television episodes, cite recorded television episodes like films. Begin with the episode name in quotation marks, followed with a series name in italics. When the title of the collection of recordings is different than the original series, list the title that would help researchers to locate the recording. Okay. Uh, give the distributor name followed by the date of distribution. Okay? So we have this example as an episode of Friends. Uh, but they got it off of a uh, DVD collection. So they're li instead of listing just Friends, they're listing Friends the Complete Sixth Season so that we know which season collection to find this episode in. Okay? Uh, then we have Broadcast TV or Radio Program. Begin with the title of the episode in quotation marks. Provide the name of the series or program in italics. Also include the network name, call letters of the station, followed by the date of broadcast and city. Okay. Uh, so we have uh, title, title of the episode, uh, series title in italics, network, affiliate, uh, affiliate location, and then the date of broadcast. Uh, then we have for Netflix, Hulu, and Google Play. This will also extend to any other. Uh, streaming services you can think of uh, off the top of my head, ones that come to mind uh, include uh, uh, Apple Plus, uh, that would include HBO Max, Disney Plus, uh, Crunchyroll, whatever you want. Okay? Generally, when citing a specific episode, follow the format below. Okay? So, uh, as you can see what they're doing, you have the individual episode, then we have the in italics, the series title. Uh, the designation of season and episode numbers, okay? Uh, the original network of broadcast. This is going to be the date of access, okay? Or, I think, or it's original date of broadcast, one or the other. Uh, it doesn't really, doesn't specify, so I would say just make that date of access, okay? Uh, then it follows up with the uh, the second container is the streaming service, in this case Netflix, and then the URL. Okay, if you're, watch if you're doing an entire TV series, when citing the entire series of a TV show, use this format. Okay, uh, so they're formatting it by starting with the creators of the show. Okay, then we have the show title uh, in italics production companies, and then the date, and then the uh, uh, last date of uh, appearance of the show, I believe, because I think 2015 was the last season, okay? So most most recent season, most recent season for the TV show, or if you're doing it, if you're doing it, they're, ta they're talking entire TV series, so basically the uh, date of the most recent season, Okay. 
Uh, then we have a uh, specific performance or aspect of a TV show. And you can uh, uh, put a spotlight on certain performers. So in this case, we have two uh, listings that are specifically focused on Amy Poehler. Okay? Uh, for some reason, they're focusing on Amy Poehler's performance. Okay? Uh, and they have two ways, of, options of doing this. One of them is on an individual episode basis, and the other is if you want to focus on that particular performer for the entire run. All right, then we have podcasts. Begin with the title of the episode in quotation marks. Provide the name of the series in italics, then follow with MLA format per usual. Okay? Uh, so we have the episode title, then we have the uh, name of the podcast in italics, the sponsor of the podcast, uh, date of broadcast, date of upload, rather, and then the URL for that podcast. Uh, we have spoken word albums such as comedy albums. Treat them the same as musical albums. Okay. And the last one on here is digital files. These are PDFs, MP3s, and JPEGs. Determine the type of work to cite. That is, it's an article, an image, or a sound recording. And cite appropriately. End the entry with the name of the digital format. If the work does not follow traditional parameters for citation, give the author's name, the name of the work, the date of creation, and the location. Okay. Now, this one kind of breaks this rule here, this uh, Moonlight Sonata listing for Ludwig Beethoven, Ludwig von Beethoven. Uh, and it doesn't really match up with this, but the other ones do, okay? So, first one is a Word file, okay? It's somebody's white paper. So, uh, author, title of the paper, uh, date, uh, uh, date of the paper, and then the type of file it is. It's a Word file. Uh, next one is a PDF. Uh, so we have the authors, okay. Then we have the title of the uh, uh, title of the work, framework for success in post-secondary writing. It's some kind of pamphlet or something like that. Uh, publisher date, and then the URL for the PDF, okay. And then the last one uh, is a article in JSTOR. Okay, I don't know why they're keeping this because JSTOR should be using DOIs, but I guess this is if you can't if you aren't supplied with a DOI for it. Okay, so we have the author, which is Phyllis Bentley, uh, title, uh, title, the container title in italics, the volume number, issue number, date, page, page run, and then the second container is JSTOR and the URL for the for the uh, listing. All right, and I know this is a short session this week, but uh, that's all I've got for you. Uh, this is a very important topic. I want to make sure that it got its own spotlight. So uh, for, the, for this week, continue working on your proposals, or proposals. Keep working on your analysis synthesis essays, okay? Uh, again, you're in the grace period for the blog assignments, so if you have your blogs... Uh, have not turned it in yet, you'll still be able to turn it in for full, for full credit. Just make sure you follow the directions for turning those papers in. Okay? Uh, also, uh, continue to work on weekly discussion boards and MindTap. Uh, we are approximately a month away from both of those coming due. So make sure that you are fully caught up on those so that you are not caught with your pants down at the end of the semester. Okay? Uh, we'll have another Collaborate session on Wednesday and uh, another one of these lectures next week. I'll see you guys then. Thanks for watching.